It is earnings season. Corporate earnings season has hit investors for the Q3 for 2000, 2020 Q3 earnings reports, meaning quarter three, if you're catching this. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and children of all ages, people always see earnings season and they're like, Prince, what does that mean? Why is that important to investors? I'm going to talk about that. And you're going to see a lot of volatility in the market. So today's episode, we're going to talk about why you see so much volatility in the market. Some of the current earnings that came out, i.e. Netflix and all the other great stuff. But we're going to talk about what they mean, what the quarter earnings report is going to mean for everybody and investors and everything. But as always, my name is Prince Dykes. This is The Investor Show. And I don't have a lot of time. And I definitely know you guys and girls don't have a lot of time. So we're going to jump straight into it. Guys and girls, as people who really follow me know that I've recently done a move here and I haven't gotten everything set up. So one of the things I don't have set up, I don't have my Investor Show mug. I truly apologize by that because usually right there, I would take a sip out of my Investor Show mug. That's kind of, get you know, that's what helped me read financial reports way, way better. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into the topic of the day. We talked about corporate earnings. What are corporate earnings? First, let's talk about what are corporate earnings. Corporate earnings are when every quarter annually, via the 10Q report, 10Q or the 10K report, companies have to open up their books and let the world, the public, see what's in their books. For prime example, when they open up their books, the CEO, the CEO of the company talks to investors and tell the investors what are going on, what's going on with their company. They show their balance sheets. They show their income statements. This, they show their cash flow statements, right? They show their balance sheets, income statements, cash flow statements, and they give forward-looking guidance to what the company is going to do. At this time, this is what's caused a lot of volatility into the company because we get the seat of companies are up to snuff. This is the chance for investors to see everything they have in their portfolio. Is it really panning out like they thought it was? Because if you really follow companies and you really, as an investor, if you really follow in companies, they start to tell you a story. You get to see what management is doing, all the other great things. So the first thing we're going to do, now we talked about what corporate earnings were and we talked about what was in them. We're going to break down a little bit further what they are how they cause so much volatility into the market. And also we're gonna look at Netflix today. We're gonna to talk about Netflix. Netflix released their quarterly earnings report a few hours ago. And we're gonna talk about what's going on with that company. As you can see that pop up on the screen there. Netflix had a very, very interesting day, but we're gonna go off from that for now. And we're gonna come back to that. And we're gonna take a look at the earnings. So the first thing, once you have your earnings report, you're gonna look at your Q, uh, 10Q. 10Q is the quarterly earnings every quarter. So the quarter start in from September, November, December, that's quarter one. Quarter two, January, February, March. April, May, June, that's the third quarter. So right now, every quarter, we get a 10Q report, which is filed to the SEC, the Security and Exchange Commission. Every quarter, uh, if you take money from the public, they must open up their books. This came from um, the Securities Act of 1933, 1933, if I'm not mistaken. But pretty much back before that time, people didn't even know what was going on with the company. I've invested in the companies and privately held companies and privately held companies. They're not held to the scrutiny that the publicly held companies uh, traded to. That's why I prefer public over private. Because, you know, it's just like you invest into your buddy and you don't know what's happening with his money. You don't know if he's making money, losing money, how much money is in the bank. Is it stealing money? You don't know what's going on. And that's what the world was before the Great Depression. Now, investors now can see what's going on with a company every single day. So first, let's start up with the income statement. The income statement is just that simple and easy. It's the income. How much income are you making? How much money is coming in? How much money is going out? Where is it going to? What are your assets? What are your current assets? What are your current liabilities, right? How much money is the company making? What is it total revenue? Is the total revenue growing or is the total revenue uh, de declining? Secondly, you can see if the company is profitable. Is the company profitable? Is it netting a profit? Is it netting a loss? All these great things you can see from the income statement. Next up, you're going to have the balance sheet. The balance sheet is referred to as money in the bank. It tells me how much money is in the bank. People can talk all they want. Now people say, uh, people lie, numbers don't. This is why quarterly earnings are so important. Because with the balance statement, I can look at all the assets in the company. I can look at all, I can look at all the liabilities in the company. And if I know the assets and liability, what can I figure out? I can figure out shareholders equity, and I also can figure out the network of the company, right? 
Also, I just forgot to mention on the income statement, one big thing you get to see, another big thing, there's so many big things you can see, but you also get to see how much cash is on hand. How much cash does the company have? How much cash, how much debt? So back to the balance sheet, we got the assets. We got all the assets, all the current assets. Current assets are assets that uh, are due, that can be turned into cash within under a year. Then you have long-term assets, anything that's over a year that can be turned into cash. So why is current assets so important? Because I want to know if the crap hits the fan, <clears throat> like it has been in 2020, how fast can you pay off your debt? I get to see all the assets, all the cash, and all the debt. Next up, we got the cash flow. On the cash flow statement, we can see three major things. We can see how the company is financing itself, how much money is coming into the company. I can look at the cash flow statement and it'll tell me the PE ratio immediately, and I can look at it, the company's netting a loss or if it's netting profits. So when a company is netting loss, if it's consistently netting losses, Hertz, remember Hertz? Who remember Hertz the rental car? Hertz was uh, netting losses for the last couple of years. And now this year it came in and it really blew up. Why did it blow up? Because of when the COVID-19 hit, when the pandemic hit, now COVID-19, people stopped traveling with all the traveling bans. And guess what? Hertz is con directly connected to the travel. So if people are not flying, guess what happens? When people are not flying, they can't do it, right? They can't rent, they don't rent cars when they're not flying. So when the hard times came, the first one was to go was Hertz. Like I always say, ladies and gentlemen, the airline companies, I think the first airline to go, I think Spirit. Spirit's gonna be an airline that's gonna have a hard time. I think Hawaiian Airlines is another one that's gonna have a hard time. Why is that? Because I can look at the financial reports. They were the smallest companies that were barely netting profits and some were even already netting losses before the pandemic hit so now that the pandemic hit i really thought ladies and gentlemen by june or july we'll be out of this mess but we're going even further so what does that mean that means that companies are going to have to last even longer yes a lot of them received a payment uh paypal protection not paypal payroll protection plan they received a ppp loan from the government to help them out but guess what just happened ladies and gentlemen on september 30th they can now furlough people. After September 30th, airlines can now furlough people. That was one of the stipulations when they received the, the bailout in February, March timeframe that they could not lay off workers until September 30th. Ladies and gentlemen, it does not look like we're gonna be digging out of this thing anytime soon. As the COVID-19 numbers continue to rise, it's putting travel on hold. But that's why the earnings report are so important. Next week, we're gonna have, we just had Delta Airlines release their earnings. Next week, we got Southwest Airlines, which is going to release its earnings. Now, we're going to look at uh, what's going on with the company. We're not what's going on with the company. We're also going to look at um, how company earnings will give a forward-looking statement. Delta gave a forward-looking statement that did not look so good. That's why you've seen the airline companies all decrease and decline so drastically, right? So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, now let's get into, now that we know what the corporate earnings were, we know what's inside of them. We're gonna talk about why do they create so much market volatility. Now, why do they create so much market volatility? They create so much market volatility because now we get to see if companies are up to snuff. Up to snuff because every time a company releases its corporate earnings, the biggest thing that it gives is it's gonna give a forward-looking statement. Prince, what is a forward-looking statement? A forward-looking statement is a statement of what is going to happen in the future. So companies get to say, well, in the future, this is what I think is going to happen. This is what I think is not going to happen. So for prime example, the CEO gets on a call somewhere. If you can type in any company that you may have, if you have McDonald's, type in McDonald's Investor Relations, and they keep the conference call for about a week. You can go onto the website. You can listen to the CEO tell you what he thinks is going to happen for the future of the company, right? Now, with this being said, when a company, when a CEO announces what's going to happen to the future in the company, he also, when those, when he makes his predictions, when he makes his prediction, predictions, we also look and we look at the guidance of, hey, is this matching what the CEO said in the last quarter? Prince, what do you mean? Prime example, later in the show, we're going to talk about Netflix. Netflix CEO comes out and says, hey, this is how much money we're going to do. We're going to grow into the future. Next quarter is going to be great. This is what we're predict, um, predicting for the following quarter. And 
Wall Street takes those numbers and then they go and see if you're matching up, if you are growing. What drives the market is earnings, future earnings, future earnings of a company. This is why earnings season is so important to investors. Earnings season is so important to investors because we get a look up under the hood of every particular company, right? So now if, the, if those numbers don't match what the CEO said in a good or bad way, this will causes a lot of volatility. This is what makes investors excited and buy more, or this is what makes investors sad and they started to sell, start to sell. So for prime example, we look at Tesla. Tesla earnings are going to come out at the end of the month. We've seen Tesla make a wild ride in this last quarter, going up over almost 100%, from $780 almost over to $1,500. But we're going to find out if they're up under, what's up under their hood here in a couple of weeks. This is what investors are waiting for. They're going to look, they're going to make their estimates, and they're going to see what uh, Mr. Elon Musk has to say, and he has to open up his earnings. When they open up his earnings, that is the time we're going to be able to tell if the company is up to snuff. This is what caused so much volatility into every particular company, right? So when we look at this, now that we know, we talked about what corporate earnings were, what they, um, what's inside of them, and how they connect the volatility of the market, right? Now here, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come up on a quick break here shortly. And after that break, we're going to get into good old Netflix. Netflix today released their earnings report, and they're going to be a prime example of everything I just said. We're gonna talk about what the corporate earnings were, what the CEO said, and we're also gonna take a look at, well, we're not gonna be able to take a look at on this particular show, we're gonna talk about the income statements, what caused their market volatility, did they move at all? Why did they move all those great things? So right now we're gonna take a quick commercial break, and not a commercial break, we're gonna take a quick break, and after the break, we're gonna get into Netflix and how Netflix is uh, dominating the market well, not dom it's still dominating the market, but how it's going to be dominating the headlines tomorrow morning. Aloha, I'm Christine Linders, a physical therapy specialist and the host of Movement Matters. My show is designed to teach you the simplest and most effective treatment strategies to get you out of pain and back to doing what you love. If you or someone you know is having pain in a certain area of the body and would like a free assessment in treatment over media or in person, and then come on the show to talk about it. Email us at thinktechmovementmatters at gmail.com. Or if you have a topic you would like to know more about, please email us. My goal is to decrease pain all over the world, inspiring people to take better care of their bodies, to enjoy life to the fullest. I look forward to hearing from you. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, you're now tuned into the Invest Prince of Investment coming to you guys and girls live all the way from the beautiful city and state of Denver, Colorado via Honolulu, Hawaii. Thank you for coming back from the break. We took a quick break and we're first we're going to talk about what we talked about before the break and then we're going to jump into Netflix and Netflix earnings. Now, what we talked about before the break, corporate earnings and why they're important to investors. The first thing is we spoke about why they were important to investors because when you look at the investors across the world, the market or uh, investors invest on potential earnings. Yes, your past, people try to use that as a good indication of what you would do into the future, but it's all about what you're going to do in the future. Can, um, it, are your profits growing? If your profits are not growing, then that means an investor's investment is not growing. 
So this is the time we get to see if you're up, you know, up to snuff. This is all we need to see. Give me a 10K report, give me a two, 10Q report, and I can read everything else I need to see, right? Now, this is another thing. When you see, we spoke about the corporate earnings, what they were. We also spoke about how they, why they were important. We spoke about what was inside of the corporate earnings, and we also spoke about why does it call, cause so much volatility. So now we're going to get into the real world of Netflix. Netflix, ladies and gentlemen, that's the topic. Now we're going to be talking about why Netflix is the uh, the joint topic of today. Well, it will be you will see a lot of headlines on it, and financial headlines on it tomorrow. So the thing about it is, when you look at Netflix, the problem you have with Netflix is not the problem, but Netflix did their earnings. I had predicted that Netflix would drop about fifty bucks. That was my um, a guesstimation, you could say. And the reason why was three things. When, I, when you look at the, the revenue of Netflix, pay attention to the revenue. You can pay attention to the revenue by looking at the sec.gov and you can pull up any annual report you want. When you pull up the annual report, you're going to be able to find out why Netflix dropped so hard, right? So for the first reason is Netflix only makes money really one way, subscribers. And if the subscribers doesn't, doesn't grow, that means the money doesn't grow. Netflix was booming last quarter because everybody stayed home because of the pandemic. And everybody was saying, hey, well, Netflix is a great stock because guess what? It's doing a great job on um, everybody staying at home. Everybody's watching Netflix. I looked at that and said, well, just because people at home watching Netflix doesn't mean Netflix make more money. Yeah, it does mean people, um, people are watching more. Yes, that's does mean more eyeballs on the content, but that's not what drives Netflix growth. What drives Netflix growth is their, uh, what drives Netflix growth is their ability to add new subscribers. So when I looked at it, I said, do I think subscribers really grew? No. Number two, the market sentiment. So revenue, I didn't see revenue growing over the last quarter. Um, the market sentiment, everybody was so bullish on netflix you had the three to one option change three to one option change prince what does that mean for every one person that bought a put option meaning that they was betting that netflix was going to go down you had three people that was betting netflix was going to go up so it was very bullish everybody was very bullish on netflix meaning they they predicted the price would go up this is something i had with my experience on whether it was good or bad when the market is pushing the company to do so well, when all of the news and the media and everybody's investing for a company to do so well, it goes back to common sense. A lesson that I learned in life taught me that it's way harder to get attention for doing something good versus doing something bad. So it's way harder for people to remember your good, but it's very easy for people to remember your bad. So for a company to take off and do very well during its earnings, it has to surprise, it has to suppress Wall Street estimates, and it has to surprise and shock the market. That's something that's very hard to do when you already have high expectations. It doesn't take much for a company to fall off after earnings season, usually making great buying opportunities for investors. For prime example, Netflix had high expectations. Everybody was so bullish on it. And I thought to myself, why is everyone so bullish on Netflix? Pretty simple. Everybody said, man, everybody's at home. Everybody's watching Netflix or whatnot. I said, well, if everybody's at home, I look up the SEC report, the 10Q, 10Q report from last quarter. And I said, well, their revenue doesn't come from people watching it. Their revenue comes from subscribers, subscribers paying ahead and consuming their material. So I said, well, the expectations are very high. I don't see the subscribers really growing. I think Netflix is poised for a 10% drop, right? And that's what happened. Right after the market closed, uh, Netflix CEO released their numbers and they gave a glooming, um, they missed on their revenue and they also didn't give good forecasting for the next quarter. The CEO said that, hey, I think the initial shock of the COVID-19 has gone and I don't really see it growing in the following quarter. But that being said, Netflix fell 10% in the after hours market. So tomorrow morning, you will see Netflix 
it'd probably be trading downwards somewhere in the double digits, maybe single digits, but somewhere around that five to 10% Netflix will drop. Do I think people oversold it? Yes. I just think the expectations got a little bit ahead of them. Everybody started selling that stock. Everybody started buying, 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 and the company fell off. Ladies and gentlemen, this is why earnings are so important because you're seeing so much volatility. Also, it could make a great buying opportunity for new investors. Now, when everybody gets sour grapes about Netflix, yes, it's going to have a major drop probably tomorrow. It'll probably be a bad day for Netflix. Fall along with a Monday morning, it'll probably be a bad day for Netflix. It'll probably fall down to below $500. This makes a golden opportunity for investors to come in and buy call options for $500 leading up to the next earnings season. You guys and girls understand that? Now, Netflix was at $5.27. It's going to drop down tomorrow to about $5.75, $5.80, below $500. So Netflix has already demonstrated it can go over $500. Now, this is a time for if you was looking at Netflix, this could be a time to get Netflix. Now that that it has sour grapes, this is when the best investors in the world come in and started to buy Netflix. Now, when everybody starts to buy Netflix, if you want to be a little bit more riskier, you can buy a call option that goes three months out for Netflix at $500. You're not expecting Netflix to do anything great. You're expecting Netflix to just go back to where it was, which it will. It will go back over 500 bucks. It's just that initial shock and market sentiment that hits the market now, right? So as you see the uh, with Netflix, what happened with Netflix, you saw... The CEO came out, people read the income statement, balance sheet. They also read the cash flow statement. They also listened to the CEO. They saw the future of Netflix. I've never been sold on Netflix because Netflix, I felt the space was too crowded. Um, I felt when they came out, it was a cool idea. When they had the little vending machines, if everybody remembers, they might still have them, kind of what Redbox does. I think Netflix was kind of doing that. Then Netflix kind of got into the gaming consoles and then Netflix just kind of got into the, it just dominated the space. It figured it out. They got the right back and it figured it out. Bye bye goes blockbuster. Redbox is still around, but I don't really use Redbox because I don't even think, I don't even have a DVD player. So with that being said, Netflix is now dominating the place, dominating the space. Now here comes just like anything. When you have high profits and a low barrier of entry, it increases competition. When you have high profits, meaning you're making a lot of money, a low barrier of entry, meaning that anybody can do it, it's going to increase competition. If people find out I made a million dollars by writing on a sheet of paper, people are going to figure that out. They're going to start writing on a piece of paper. And what, is, what does that do? Now you have Disney coming in with their own streaming platform. I heard the WWE had their own streaming, ESPN, uh, Showtime. So many people coming with their own streaming services. I think it's going to get in the way and start to crowd that space. That's why I never was a big believer in Netflix. Just because of that space. So uh, just because of that space dominance and crowding of what was going on. When I look at Netflix and I look at the world around itself, uh, not even Netflix, we're talking about looking at their whole service. Uh, The service is a good service. It has a brand name. It has a big name. It is still leading this space, but I just see a space over the future. Amazon jumping into the space, Disney jumping into the space. These are not small players. These are mega players that are coming into the Netflix, Netflix space. Disney brought Star Wars. They pulled all of this stuff off of Netflix and started putting it on Disney. I didn't like that going into the future. I felt the space was too dominant, and I didn't feel like Netflix has a very, very competitive advantage to be above everybody else, right? I felt Disney does. Disney, I think they're pulling all of the Disney content off of Netflix and starting their own streaming service. What's 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 going to stop uh, a company like Nickelodeon and the Cartoon Network from doing the same thing? Right. Not saying they won't, but they can. I feel the space is uh, their space is way too crowded. That's why I never was a big fan on it. But I use Netflix. I don't want to get off topic. I use Netflix to explain what we talked about before the break. Before the break, we talked about corporate earnings. We talked about uh, what corporate earnings were. We talked about what was inside of corporate earnings. And we talked about why they created volatility. Then we went back and we talked about um, 
not only did we talk about that, we also went back and we talked about Netflix, which applied to all of that. Netflix released, Netflix released their earnings. Netflix CEO got on and spoke. The earnings didn't look like they were up to snuff too much. And then guess what happened? Netflix fell by 10% in the pre-market. Doesn't mean it's going to carry over to the real market, but it has done it into the pre-market. So this is what you have to be very weary of when you're doing investing, when you're investing around the globe. You have to be very mindful of what's going on with the company, what's going on with that space. And this is why you must pay attention to corporate earnings. Because now today you're waking up and you're wondering why did your company fall off 10%? And your company fell off 10%, maybe it could, could have been because of earnings. Earnings season, if you have a big tech company, you're going to see a big swing. Amazon is going to swing up or down. Uh, Netflix is going to swing up or down like it did. Uh, Facebook, Apple, Microsoft, maybe not so much. Uh, Zoom, I think it comes out in September. But these companies usually make big swings during this time because they get a lot of analysts very excited. They get a lot of analysts very sad. But ladies and gentlemen, that's going to conclude today's topic and episode. I hope you guys and girls got something out of this because I, I sure enjoyed talking about it. Um, thank you guys and girls that are catching this live on Think Tech Hawaii. And for all the people that are catching this back on YouTube and the podcast, if you're not checking out the podcast, you check us out, Think Tech Hawaii. We're here on YouTube, we're on, on, on iTunes Radio, Google Play, and we're also uh, on Facebook as well. Facebook, YouTube. Uh, iTunes, Radio, Google Play, all of the great stuff. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Prince Dykes. I'm the Prince of Investment. And to the next video, podcast, cartoon, book, or whatever else crazy you see me do around the globe, peace, be safe, I'm out, and thank you.